call the regularly scheduled meeting for the City Council for the City of Dunsmuir to order at 6 p.m. this February the 20th, 2020. We will now stand for the flag salute. I know it's your name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. presentations and we have uh, Sheriff Wolfie here today with us for the annual Sheriff's Report. So Sheriff Wolfie, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you, ma'am. Welcome, sir. Thank you. All right, Madam Mayor and uh, other distinguished members of the City Council, uh, we have a brief summary of uh, our annual report for uh, 2019. And I have to tell you that uh, I was very pleased that Senator West Nine, West Nine uh, you know, provides uh, outstanding leadership here. And we have Lieutenant uh, Barrett Tharzi, who's also involved, our field lieutenant. And Captain Carl Houtman is with me to my left and your right. Uh, just uh, great uh, leaders and uh, doing a great job here. What we thought we'd do is just go through some of the uh, statistics that you might be interested in, and then some of the major cases and then uh, entertain any questions you might have. And uh, again, these are summaries and also have copies uh, that I'll give you if you want a copy of uh, what I'm going to uh, summarize for you. Uh, first of all, uh, we are pleased and uh, honored to participate in uh, various 2019 special events uh, for Dunsmuir. And uh, we always enjoy that, but it includes the railroad Days Parade, Homecoming Parade, First Annual Steampunk Event, Brewfest, and other events. So that, that's a, a big priority, of course, because we have a big influx of people coming into town. It's always uh, nice to have that security, that extra level of security uh, to give everybody that, that <coughs> in that, uh, that comfort zone uh, uh, perspective so they have more fun and spend more money. There you go. Uh, uh, some of the significant cases, uh, you know, Dunsmuir is a great city, but I can tell you that uh, all the uh, nine municipalities and many communities in Siskiyou County, you know, are struggling right now. And generally speaking, rural counties are experiencing an upsurge in violent crime. Uh, mental health uh, issues are a major challenge for law enforcement all over the state. And I, I think probably uh, the, the issues are even more profound in rural counties. And certainly uh, we were plagued with, uh, you know, petty type crimes, uh, you know, the uh, property type crimes, and certainly homelessness is, is a growing problem, you know, uh, in, in, in Dunsmuir and every community in Siskiyou County. We just had our point in time count, and I believe that was up uh, about 315 to 320 or something like that. So, our, yes. Uh, Dunsmuir is already at six. We had six total that were identified during the point in time. Right, and we appreciate uh, the, your participation and uh, feedback on that. But wherever they are, uh, that usually uh, poses, uh, you know, uh, challenges for us. And we try to plug those people. You know, our uh, philosophy here is to transition people out of homelessness and, uh, you know, meet their needs, whether it's uh, housing or it's uh, mental health care counseling, substance abuse. Uh, you know, treatment is often, uh, you know, applicable. So we try to do that. We try to plug them in uh, to, uh, to those services that they need. So, uh, and also your Family Resource Center, Steve, in the, in the Dunsmere, I think, is being very proactive, and you can be proud of what Dunsmere is doing. Of course, we have outstanding leadership from our supervisor, Ed Venezuela, very supportive of law enforcement, very proactive, and he's a great uh, proponent and, uh, and, and supporter of Dunsmuir, and I see that in every uh, every meeting that we have uh, with the Board of Supervisors and sometimes outside the uh, those uh, chambers as well. Uh, some of the significant uh, cases, uh, January last year we had a sexual assault. 
It's an ongoing investigation on sex crimes that occurred several years ago. The suspect is identif uh, has been identified. We're attempting to locate him. So, uh, you know, we do have serious crimes that occur even in nice communities like Dunsmuir. Uh, residential burglary, uh, 128 of 19, occurred at, uh, in the 4100 block in Dunsmuir Ave. About $30,000 in property was stolen. Through the investigation uh, and the leads, we developed a suspect, uh, a man by the name of Graves. We conducted a search warrant operation at a local residence where we recovered a lot of the property. We were able to track down another location where other property was located. The team did a really good job on that. And most of the stolen property was recovered, and uh, unfortunately, Mr. Graves was arrested and convicted for the crime. But a lot of times when people uh, offend, a lot of times it's alcohol and drug related. And believe it or not, our county is very proactive in helping get people treatment. And a lot of times they get their help they need when they're in the, the uh, jail system. We had a pretty major drug arrest on the uh, 1st of uh, February. Felony warrant suspect was observed at the Chevron station. When contacted and arrested for the warrant, a uh, marble size 3.8 grams of uh, heroin and a golf ball size about 7 grams of methamphetamine were found. I could tell you right now that throughout the county we're having a serious problem uh, with, uh, with drugs. We're causing most of the crime problems. Meth is making a huge comeback because it's potent and cheap, primarily coming in from Mexico. It's really very prevalent here. We're starting to see a lot of opioids, heroin, fentanyl. Fentanyl is about 50 times more uh, uh, potent than uh, morphine. So we're seeing a lot of that. We're seeing some cocaine. Prescription drugs are a big issue. Uh, but we're doing a lot of proactive things. Like, for example, we participate in the Cisco against RX addiction. And uh, doctors, pharmacists, law enforcement, uh, nurse practitioners, uh, and again, the physicians are doing a great job trying to uh, uh, minimize those issues. We've issued Narcan, Naloxone, an anecdote to uh, all law enforcement agencies within Siskiyou County. So if we encounter someone under the influence of heroin, we can save their lives. We've saved a few lives. And we've also provided that to many fire departments. So we're being proactive. And the pharmacists and doctors, uh, the hospitals are all on board, and I think we're being pretty proactive in that regard. Again, our, our, our board of supervisors, uh, our supervisor Donald Soil, is very supportive of all those efforts. Uh, we made another drug arrest on uh, 8 February. A felony uh, warrant suspect was located in Dunsmuir upon searching incident to arrest. Found uh, several grams of uh, methamphetamine and some grams of heroin on them. Suspect was arrested and booked on drug charges. We also, unfortunately, in uh, March of last year, we had a sexual assault involving a minor. And the suspect was located, interviewed, he confessed, and was booked for sex crimes and convicted, and he was sentenced to prison. We had another sexual assault in August on the 3rd. Uh, sexual assault involved a cruelty against a female juvenile. A suspect was located, interviewed, he confessed, and was booked for several sex-related uh, charges and he was uh, convicted. We had a commercial burglary on uh, November 14th at the uh, Cornerstone, you probably remember that. A suspect was identified through investigative leads. A suspect, Lamont Brown, who was, who was in custody, was booked for this burglary. Uh, and again, uh, Sergeant Westine and the team did a great job investigating that. He, this suspect is a very troubled young man, was previously involved in other burglaries in Densmore, including the uh, Yaks a few years back. And uh, he was arrested. I just heard from the district attorney, John Quinn, called me a couple of days ago, said he was convicted of, of this offense, and it looks like he's going to prison for 10 years. Uh, it's, it's sad that he has to go to prison for so long, but the good news is uh, he could get some help when he's in prison with his uh, drug-related uh, challenges. Um, the uh, major case convictions that occurred in 2019, uh, Kyle Rose was sentenced to nine years in prison for attempted murder and arson for the uh, December 22nd, uh, 2018 uh, arson fire. Yes, sir. That occurred, uh, uh, and Ben Osborne was sentenced to 12 years in prison for the uh, Christmas burglary to Harley's Antiques and other felonies. Also, uh, 
one of your, board, one of your uh, city council members uh, helped us track down a, uh, a recent uh, incident that occurred in Dunsbury where we recovered components of uh, two illegal drug labs in the city and uh, and uh, uh, our great uh, city councilman uh, Abe Keisler always looking out for uh, the, the citizens out there called us and uh, we uh, started then Wettstein got on uh, that case and uh, Scotty Stock one of our deputies actually arrested the, uh, the suspect for uh, those uh, possessing those drug lab uh, components uh, that was Forrest Kirk so that was good news he was arrested for that <coughs> just to give you a few uh, a little bit more uh, information about some of the uh, the calls that we typically get in Dunsmere during any given year uh, last year uh, we had 53 alarm calls 16 assault and batteries, three assault with a deadly weapon. Um, we had uh, four auto thefts, 19 burglaries. We had 24 child abuse calls. Unfortunately, child abuse and, uh, and domestic abuse are two problems that we just cannot shake in this county, but we're trying. Uh, we had uh, 10 dead body cases. We had 153 disturbing the peace related calls, 22 domestic violence calls, five uh, drunken publics, four drunk drivers, uh, and elder abuse. Uh, we had 68 fish and game violations, 16 forgeries, 10 grand thefts. We had uh, eight uh, mental health care calls. We have 51, we investigate 51 felonies and 27 misdemeanor uh, offen other offenses. Uh, we respond to hundreds of other calls, non-criminal uh, calls, uh, 132 contact suspects, you know, who are acting suspiciously. Uh, 37 petty theft calls. We conduct 19 probation searches, respond to three prowler calls. Uh, three runaway calls, six uh, scams. We're getting a lot more of these scams, especially victimizing the uh, elderly. I'm really proud of the team. They did, they conducted 196 uh, uh, school security checks. We've asked all our deputies, even though we're shorthanded, to visit the schools as often as possible to enhance the security of our schools and to provide that presence and that deterrence. Uh, we conducted 235 other security checks, primarily businesses uh, in the city. We investigated eight sexual offenses. We served 41 subpoenas. We had 11 suicide or attempted suicides. Uh, unfortunately, the county has seen an upsurge in uh, suicide or suicide. We had 17 suicides last year and it's almost double from the, the previous year, 2018. And most of those, uh, there's a drug or uh, alcohol component. I would say meth, uh, opioids, uh, THC from marijuana, and uh, alcohol are the most common uh, drugs that are associated with these uh, tragic suicides. Uh, fortunately, uh, even though we had 11 calls in, uh, in Dunsmere, most of the time we're able to uh, intervene and prevent these suicides from occurring. That's, that's the good news. But we're, we still have too many suicides uh, we uh, had uh, eight, let me see, uh, 22 traffic accidents, uh, 85 traffic-related issues, uh, 47 traffic stops, 14 trespass calls, 165 vandalism calls, oh, that's a lot, 92 vehicle stops, other vehicle stops, and 12, uh, 12 uh, calls related to juveniles, and we served uh, 12 warrants. Now, uh, I have a copy of this. I'll give uh, the, uh, the city council the, uh, a copy of all this information. And if you need any additional info, uh, please contact Ben or one of us, and uh, we'll be happy to accommodate you. I just wanted to tell you that it's a distinct honor and privilege uh, providing law enforcement services for uh, the city of Dunsbury. And the leadership and all the city workers and the citizens are just extraordinary. And we really, you know, we really enjoy it, and we appreciate all the support you provide. It makes our job very, very easy. And 
uh, again, I got to give the credit to uh, Sergeant Whetstein and the crew down here primarily. Yes, sir. Madam Mayor, um, clarifying questions and a statement. Um, sir, you had said 10 dead bodies. Is that done, sir? Uh, you do, said, those are dead body calls. Okay, and, and you said 11 suicides. No, that the, we're the, no, the suicides are 17 suicides countywide. Countywide. Yeah, and I would say that, you know, Dunsmere, a lot of these uh, crime-related problems or these tragedies that occur, you know, Dunsmere is kind of on the lower uh, spectrum. Uh, we have a lot of other communities. Well, that's good. Yeah, it is, it is. And uh, that means we're doing a lot of positive things. And I think uh, I think the city council being proactive, I think our, our board of supervisor representative I think working with law enforcement so well, we minimize a lot of these issues and problems. And I think Dunsmere is uh, just uh, in a great great place right now. And uh, we have many more communities in the county that are that, that are definitely more problematic. Uh, but but really, uh, the the drugs are the are the biggest issue. And a lot of that has to do with that beyond our control. Like laws have been passed that have minimized. A lot of the, the drug-related offenses, and and uh, and, and uh, we're really seeing uh, just a uh, a flood of uh, drugs coming up here from uh, Mexico because a lot of the cartels are retooling, uh, and they're uh, they're they're uh, sending up like fentanyl, they're sending up heroin, they're sending up meth uh, methamphetamine, and these drugs are very highly addictive. And then there's a lot of <coughs> uh, medication like Xanax and some of these narcotic analgesics that are a real serious problem. And then of course uh, with Prop 64, you know, the market's kind of flooded with uh, marijuana. And cocaine is always a problem. You know, we always, uh, and you gotta have to recognize too that I-5 is one of the major drug corridors, you know, in the, in the uh, United States. And we have US-97 is a major drug corridor. So you have, you know, we, we're here, uh, we're along these uh, major drug corridors, and, and, and that kind of precipitates some of the activity as well. But, uh, you know, we have such, uh, you know, your leadership and what you do and your support for law enforcement really helps these issues. Our, you know, I, I would say we have a great uh, board of supervisors, uh, a great CEO, you have a great city manager, and that really helps a lot. It greatly minimizes the problems that we already have. And you have the Family Resource Center where you try to help people. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, I want to commend you for the work that you have done. Um, I, I have worked with you specifically on this in particular case. And you know, I, I was very impressed with how you guys handled it. And one, how you cleaned house and got the property back to the property owner. That was, to me, was the most imperative thing. Um, I will say that um, if you rent a property and you get evicted, um, take your drug back and your drugs with you. Don't leave them behind for me to clean up because I got no choice but to call, call Ben. And Ben, I want to thank you. You know, I hope I never have to do this again with you, but uh, the way you handle it, I, I commend you and I appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that you guys you know, regardless you went to outside agencies and you got, got the help that you need to make sure that the homeowner got her home back clean and everything was gone. Great job. And as far as support from our county supervisor, I, I, I appreciate everything that man does for us. We're talking about Ed Valenzuela and Ed, I'm telling you personally, when the time comes coming up, you got my vote, sir. You guys also want to work for you all. Thank you for your support for the city of Dunster. Thank you. Yeah. All right? That's all I have. Thank yeah. you, sir. You're welcome. And uh, Ed Valenzuela always uh, supports Dunster. And Dunster is a big priority. We've got Captain Houtman and Lieutenant Bear Tharzi and uh, Sergeant Westown. You're a big priority for us. And, and uh, Ed's always something for you, believe me. And he's a great advocate for law enforcement. and. Uh, his constituents down here. We really appreciate him uh, too. So, and thank you very much for the for uh, yeah. the. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, um, sorry, I'm Sheriff. Uh, two things. First of all, I would like to uh, to really state how uh, impressed I am with the flow of uh, uh, police chiefs you sent down here. I remember working with uh, 
Sergeant Reese and then um, Sergeant Merrill, and, and I believe that now in, in Sergeant Westside we have a real winner, and I couldn't be more happy with the support that he's providing. Uh, the second thing I wanted to bring up is um, I've understood in talking with both the city manager and uh, the mayor that we have a particular problem here in the area with uh, child abuse. And uh, one of the things that I was wondering is if um, I know that on one hand the resource centers are working to try and address that, and I know from what you can do that you're addressing that. Is there some way of getting together with the, uh, I'm a member of the Siskiyou County Resource Collaborative, which deals with all of those. Is there some way you can get together with that board and develop maybe a way of working together between the, the sheriff's department and the resource centers to help address that particular problem of child abuse? Yes, and I know that uh, this is a problem throughout the county, but perhaps we should revisit this issue maybe with in partnership with the uh, Family Resource Center. Now, I just uh, saw, uh, you know, Michelle uh, up in uh, in Wairika. We attended a meeting, and maybe we, we should figure out some ways to uh, mitigate this issue. I can tell you, we should. Right, but another com uh, uh, component to this is, uh, you know, we you got great schools here, and you got great administrators, guys like Ray <clears throat> Keller. But what these these uh, community care meetings you have are very essential. And one thing that's pretty obvious is the, the teachers and administrators know who some of these uh, vulnerable kids are because, believe it or not, you have homeless kids in Dunsmere. And, and I think uh, one of the things that the Board of Supervisors and we grapple with is just the, the poverty level in, in Siskiyou County. It, it ranges from 17 to 30 percent, depending on whether you're talking about individuals or families. And when you have kids that, that have one parent and maybe that parent's working or uh, their parent is struggling with uh, some type of substance abuse issue, uh, that's why we have like a backpack program that uh, that, that Rotary is involved in. Um, you know, some of the kids don't even have uh, enough food to eat, but Dunsmere and, uh, you know, private organizations in the city have risen to the occasion to help these kids. But I think more can be done and more should be done especially as we review these annual statistics would tell us that we have a challenge that we uh, we can meet and uh, perhaps significantly mitigate. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and one last quick thing. I know we need to move on with the agenda, but I um, really just want to thank you guys and uh, really reiterate that I work really closely with Sergeant Westein and um, uh, he's uh, professional and um, responsible and I couldn't ask for anything more. So thanks guys. You're welcome. Thank you for the support. Thank you. We appreciate it. Council Eric, do you have any questions? Well uh, a comment and then two questions. The comment is as Dunsmere strives to survive, we're trying to engage with our citizens on the full spectrum of public services including public safety. So the vice mayor chairs our finance committee. I'm the vice chairman of the committee. He was on my watch with Carl 10 years ago that we cut a complete deputy position out of our budget. And I have worried about it ever since then. Does that make the community of Dunsmere less safe? And our vice chair in finance, we cut a half deputy position because our general fund is threatened. But the mayor has taken the initiative. We're going to do a visioning process. We're going to put a flyer in every utility envelope asking a number of questions about public services. Do you feel safe? And I simply want to say, I hope this is a dialogue that we have with the notion we get an extraordinarily good deal from the sheriff's office but have we had too much that's the comment um the qu question one is we're very much focused on fire safety green waste disposal ed valenzuela has made this one of his initiatives should he get reelected? I want Dunsmere to be a part of that. As a low-income rural community, are there any labor resources 
for the sum of those that need to make up to Siskiyou County and their communities, that there is a lay I've heard of various camps and various work release programs. Is that a possibility or no? Yes, we have, uh, well, for example, we have a alternate sentencing programs up in uh, Puerto Rico where kids our jails are full. So people that, uh, uh, like uh, especially low, low risk uh, offenders, we'll put in alternate sentencing uh, programs where they get education, treatment, counseling, and sometimes they do projects. Uh, they could do uh, cleanup projects and things of that nature. And we could, you know, we, they have been down here in uh, Dunsmere. Also, one thing I didn't mention is uh, we have reactivated a couple years ago with the support of the Board of Supervisors and Behavioral Health Services, our DARE program, the Drug Awareness Resistance Education. And we've been in the schools, and it's an evidence-based program that is much more effective than the, the previous DARE. And, that, and that's, how, that's how, you know, we're reaching the kids. And it's not just drugs, alcohol, and tobacco, it's things like stranger danger, it's anti-bullying, it's, uh, you know, gun safety, things like that, that they, they can really use. And that helps us uh, tremendously. But I, I think that this, uh, this community care organization could be a real catalyst for uh, addressing a lot of these issues because it's multidisciplinary in nature. And I think we get a lot done if we keep that going. And we get uh, and maybe identify a couple other community members or key people that can participate because everybody brings something to the table that's very valuable. And, and finally, <clears throat> I particularly salute you as a veteran for your support of veterans. And I think the city of Dunsmere needs to do better. So as we plan for Veterans Day 2020. Um, I hope we do have a small parade. I hope we have another ceremony at the cemetery. And I simply thank you for your advocacy and generosity around that issue. Uh, thank, thank you uh, very much. And uh, I can tell you that we're here for you and we'd love to participate in any veterans events. And we actually supervise, I have supervised the veteran service office that the board of supervisors actually expanded. And we've been here, you know, like with a new flagpole, and we'll be here for you, and we love that. And Dunsmere is a very patriotic community. You have a lot of veterans here, so we, we look forward to that. Thank you for that recognition. And we salute you, too, and, and uh, all of you for all your support. And get a hold of us if you need something. Well, Doug said that we could use a new flag, one of the weatherproof flags at the cemetery for that new flagpole. I'll give Just it. the same. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Just Thank you. One, right. one last quick question. Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you again um, for all of your work here. We appreciate that. Um, I do have concerns similar to the discussion with Council Member Deutsch on domestic abuse, child abuse, and the sexual violence that you've talked about in the community. As someone who has experienced those things, it's very close to me that we work harder to addressing those issues. Um, my understanding is, is you push the Board of Supervisors to declare states of emergency for issues in law enforcement, specifically for drug trafficking on Interstate 5. And I'm wondering if there are other avenues for us to look into mental health and abuse cases and sexual violence um, states of emergency as well. If that's something that's warranted for our area to get better mental health as well as counseling and services for individuals who suffer from these types of crimes. I think anything we could do proactively would be very beneficial, and it's a it's a partnership. And you know, we got a lot of people. You know, we have the county, we have the city, we have the law enforcement, we have many people that want to help. Okay. And let's work together and identify public health is a is a huge component. Another thing is, I think it may be a good idea for me to go back and look at these, like the the child abuse calls, and yeah. drill down and determine what kind, get more detail for you so that we could focus our efforts more specifically. I just think in my experience yeah. there are lots of programs we can be looking at and investing our time and resources towards that lower these levels. Um, because yeah. these are types of crimes where victims don't fully recover. Right. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. So, um, you know, I hope in the next year we can come back and have an annual report from me next year about what we've done to tackle these types of things. Madam Mayor, that's a great uh, suggestion and uh, we'll keep working on it. 
And uh, I'll be in touch with you about the resource collaboratives and maybe we get together and bring some stakeholders together for the schools and everyone and just talk through and look at it. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for bringing that right. Madam President. Yeah, great idea. Let's uh, be forward. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move into item number four, which is our time for general public comments. And this is a time for individuals to give comments either on our special presentation, which we just had, which thank you again for your time with us, Sheriff Lopi, anything that is not on the agenda or anything that is on our consent agenda. And just to review quickly, our consent agenda includes a SB1 funding resolution project list, local transportation fund claim form, check register, and fire engine swap. Uh, those are the items on our consent agenda. If you'd like to comment about those items not on the agenda or a uh, uh, special presentation, um, please, you have three minutes now. Tim? Tim Holt. First of all, I want to thank Sheriff Loki. He didn't mention it, but he is supporting uh, progress on the Mossbury Trail. Oh, yes, sir on safety grounds and hopefully that'll help that keep that project moving forward. I've stood here quite a few times to speak on behalf of our library, as you know, to encourage the city to support it with funds from the sales tax increase measure passed by Dunsmuir voters a few years ago. Thus far I feel the city has been pretty fair in its allocation of measure P funds to the library. But it has become apparent to me after a recent meeting I had at City Hall that my advocacy on this very important matter of library funding is subject to misinterpretation. So let me be clear, those of you who were in town when Measure P, the sales tax increase, was passed, understand that it was in fact passed because of a concerted door-to-door -door effort by library supporters to get it passed, and that the city's voters went to the polls with the understanding that Measure P was on the ballot to support the library and our community pool. Show and tell here, this is something that was sent out to all Dunsmuir voters. Save the Dunsmuir pool, support our library. A yes vote on Measure P will help keep the Dunsmuir pool open and support the operations of the Dunsmuir library. Here's the tricky part. It is also true that Measure P is a general tax not a dedicated tax, and that its revenues go into the city's general fund and can be allocated as the city wishes. I've never said anything from this podium to contradict that obvious fact, since I of course understand the difference between a general tax and a dedicated, a tax dedicated to a specific purpose. So, with that understanding of the legal niceties, there is one other very important consideration, that of keeping faith with the voters of this city by supporting our library with revenues from Measure P. The fact is that you wouldn't have this money to disperse to anybody if the library hadn't faced a funding crisis after the county completely cut off all funding for its branch libraries motivating library supporters in Dunsmuir to get the sales tax increase passed. So I hope this clarifies my and the library's position on this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who would like to give a public comment on items not on the agenda? Well, Madam Mayor and City Council members and all of those present, my name is Rona Macy. Until last month, I was a resident at the uh, Dunsmere Hotel, or Hotel Dunsmere. And uh, what I want to talk about is the sad deterioration of the buildings in this town owned by Mr. Mark Juarez. Uh, I've known him for a long time. I used to work with, uh, for him in the Bay Area. And uh, unfortunately, he's a true visionary. I believe that. The man can be a genius. But he doesn't have the ability, the willingness, uh, or the drive, or the finances to make his dreams become a reality. Um, therefore, things are just getting worse and worse, and I know this has been going on a very long time here. I'm a new resident, but I certainly know what's been happening, and, and also in weed, but that has nothing to do with us. Um, my second point is I was his personal assistant for about six months, and I was witness to uh, many lies uh, that this man told in regard to all kinds of business dealings and things like that. 
and I think it's about time it's just brought out into the open, for those of you who don't know, um, that uh, he is not a professional or honest or reliable person, and dealings with him um, are just uh, a waste of time because anything he says um, more than likely is, is not true. Uh, I am a certified life coach, and I specialize in organization, and in my professional opinion, Mr. Juarez is a hoarder. Um, I have been in his apartment, I have been in his building and seen all the rooms there. And uh, I believe that his buying up of properties, both here and in Weed, uh, is part of uh, his affliction. And that he, um, he just gets things, uh, it gives him some kind of power or whatever it is. Well, and he, yes. What's it? For, for items during the public comment, yes. I appreciate you bringing this up about Mark and his right. properties, um, but we typically like comments that are within our realm that we can assist with. Okay. Not character assassination. This okay. is a fine line. It is. It so is. We appreciate it. Gotcha. Yes. So um, if, if, if you happen to have a point about what the city of Dumsmere should be doing or anything within our Okay, I'm sorry I overstepped my bounds, but I, I believe the... Uh, I, I right. <laughs> it's a very emotional uh, yeah, topic. Yes. Um, yes. I, I believe um, it, it would be in the city's interest to really look at the uh, buildings that are uh, historical properties and that could be restored um, by perhaps another owner or the city. I don't exactly know how that goes, but there is so much potential in these buildings and they're beautiful, they're historical, and they're just going to ruin. And if there's anything the city can do about that, I don't know what it is. Rest I would sure we're in the process. Okay. Thank you. And once again, I apologize for it's okay. that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who would like to give a general public comment on items not on the agenda, on our consent agenda, or in reference to our special presentation? And not uh, character assassination. Noam Davis. And I would also like to address the uh, building situation. I'm going to make it very brief, though. I, as I understand it, today is the second reading. I really hope that for the good of the whole community, that will be passed. So it can be implemented and we can have a much more peaceful and beautiful and attractive community. Thank you. And just for reference for the general public, uh, the second reading is on our old business, so we will open up another opportunity for public comment in relation to our abandoned and distressed building ordinance number 565. So there will be another opportunity for that. So for right now, are there any other general public comments on items that are not on the agenda? Hi, Paris Patrick. Shasta Avenue. <clears throat> so I brought up this uh, last week and I just wanted to bring it up again since Todd and Juliana are here. Um, I have noticed that our treasurer does not attend these meetings and I think it would be in the best interest of the city if the treasurer did in fact attend these meetings as I have seen him um, comment on what happens in the meetings but he is not actually here. He may speak and then leave so I just think that that would be a better choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other general public comments on items not on the agenda? Um, no, we will do that later. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll call you guys up for that one. All right, seeing no other general public comment, I will close that item and move on to item number five, which is council and staff comments, and I will begin with city manager Nichols. Uh. I think the only, well, a couple things. Um, I'll keep them brief. Uh, I spent a considerable amount of time down in Caltrans over the last two weeks uh, trying to work on, um, well, uh, work with Caltrans on the, the redecking of the 800 foot bridge. We have our uh, water supply running underneath that deck. And there is a section that's in dispute, and Caltrans is claiming that it's our ownership, and it could end up being a three million dollar bill. Um, yes, but um, in testifying down there and digging through historical records and having some folks down there that have been really helpful to our cause, I think that um, uh, I'm ninety-five percent sure that we're in the clear. 
The only thing um, that we may face down the road, and this gets a little bit arcane, is there's a formula on the books, it's old, that says, uh, there's a formula, uh, the functional lifespan of that bridge uh, versus how old it is, so, you know, that uh, basically is a one-to-one -one relationship, times what it costs to build that section of the bridge, which is $20,000, we're on the hook for. So, we might need to, to file a, um, uh, you know, a um, insurance claim for $20,000 down the road, four, three, four, five years down the road, but we, I'm still fighting that and working that out. That's, that's one. The other is um, the Butterfly Bridge. We uh, got Caltrans to finally release the money, and I'm working with Jacobs on a scope and trying to get up um, preliminary engineering is starting, and um, you know uh, we should hit our deadline in getting that constructed. We've got five years, but we've lost a year and a half in the process yeah. up to now. So, but we're we're moving. The money's flowing, and so we're we're moving forward. Thank you. Any questions for city staff? All right, Board Member Deutsch, comments for tonight? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Um, one of the things I'd like to discuss, because I've been feeling this for a while, is, is that having been involved with the council now for over four years, um, it strikes me that most people don't realize the real challenge that we face as a city because of the size of our office staff. Um, when we look at doing anything on the agenda, anything that's going to take any kind of a staff report, it really basically comes down to uh, one person, Todd Dumas. And anything that any of the council members expect to be done has to be filtered through an office that we do have finance, obviously, and we do have uh, Julie there. But in terms of really going out and, and taking on any kind of a challenge, any kind of a project, any kind of an assignment for the council for the agenda, it goes all to one person. And if you look at Mount Chaska, for instance, they have more people, but just in terms of running a city, how many people are there? Probably about 15 people in the office? 10 to 15? Yeah, about 15 to 18. Yeah, and that, we have two, if you will, and three, if you will. So um, the point I want to make is, is that I hope people realize that when we're dealing with the city manager at Dunsmere, we've been blessed three out of the four times, if you will, and the point is, is that we're blessed right now. The, the, the feedback I'm getting from all around, from everybody that's had any kind of contact with Mr. Yuvas, has been exemplary. Um, everywhere I look, everyone I talk to is really impressed. And I just want you all to realize that the work that he puts in and what he does for the city, just like Mark did before and Randy did before that, is really something that's extraordinary and we take for granted. When we look at the difference between Mount Shasta and Dunsmere, it really puts the focus on one person. I just want to compliment him for the work he's been doing. Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, I want to move on from this. Thank you. <laughs> um, but we have we have a lot of dedicated staff that work extremely hard. I just want to add that. So. Yeah, I didn't want to take away from them, but I wanted to point out the particular challenge you have. Councilmember Kessler, any comments for tonight? Yeah. Um, one, I want to go back and again publicly commend the sheriff and acknowledge the fact that this council member appreciates what you guys do for this city. You know, we're, we're here doing the paperwork, we do negotiations, we're writing your checks, but we see what you're doing and I feel it's worth every damn thing, so thank you. Um, but, um, I didn't realize that we had a problem such about the, the domestic violence and the child abuse. I commend you, Madam Mayor, for putting that as a forefront for us to be working on this year. Um, I, I want to be part of and, and volunteer anything I can be. I'd like to be part of that coalition. Um, I feel that Paris has a valid point as far as our treasure. One, he comes and makes comments, but he should be available for questions, especially if there's money or things where the treasurer could be questioned, he's the only one out of all of us that's got a paycheck. So I, I think that he should be available at meetings. That's my opinion. Sorry, Mario. Um, um, Don't say sorry. We have to be here. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what they call it. The stipend? Stipend. Stipend. Oh, it's stipend. Uh, anyway. Um, just so everybody knows, I'll be knocking on your door. 
um, the Rotary Golf Tournament is coming up, and I'll be hitting you up. If you want to put a sign out there to advertise yourself, your business, your mom's birthday, whatever, it's a good way, and all the money goes for our kids for, uh, um, what do you get when you come for a call? Backpack. No, for the, it goes for the backpack program, and it goes for, what do you get when you go to college? You get what? Scholarship. Scholarship. So it all goes for our kids. So uh, what's the date for the tournament? I don't know yet. Lynn, what's the date of the tournament? The date April 25th. It'll be April 25th. It's at the Wee Golf Tournament. Golf Tournament. Beautiful. Beautiful Lake place. Lake Shastina, not Wee. Lake Shastina. There is a difference. Yes. yes. Lake Shastina. Lake Shastina. Yep. Okay. Is that the one where we had it before with all the ducks in it? Yep. They got ducks and deer and probably golf course and just like skate away for the duck and make like, shot. So it's really cool. And of course they invite y'all to come out. It's for the kids. So come out and have this and support the Denver Rotary Club. And then last, I want to commend Mr. Keith Cool, the owner of the grocery store, and all the people that work at that store. He's had the employees, family members, everybody out there busting, working really hard. And uh, um, um, it's supposed to be open at the end of the at the end of the month. If we're looking there, it's like a brand new store. Okay. So um, I appreciate the fact that. Do you realize this man's losing over a thousand dollars a day to make something right? I give him props. Thank you, Madam Thank you, Councilman Kessler. Councilman Arnold. Well, my first comment is I'm glad. The mayor is with us. She attended a meeting with me last week and she was on death's door. Oh. Some sort of flu bug. Uh, and she wrote down the date for the Rotary Golf Tournament. If the city council wants to have a foursome, if Big Dave plays, I'm in. Oh. I've never golfed. It would turn into a small comedy. I'm not allowed to hold a golf course, golf club. The judge. <laughs> in terms, I, I have three items and two of them relate to Tim Holt who's in the audience. Tim is the chair of the group of former winners of the Citizen of the Year Award and the Alexander Dunsmuir Award and we have already been meeting with the goal of the 2020 version of the award ceremony, which will embrace the Business of the Year, the Alexander Dunsmuir Award, and the Citizen of the Year. That will be May 16th at the Community Center. Uh, Rotary providing a full bar. I hope all the members of the City Council attend. The second item is there will be and this sort of relates to one of our agenda items, a chamber mixer next week, February 26th, Mossbury Hotel in the evening. Uh, this is the effort in no small part of Cindy Foreman, a dedicated community member to try to rebuild our chamber. And again, I hope you all come. Uh, the third is, is sort of going back to the city manager and staff. Tim Holt asked me a while ago whatever happened to the report back on Children's Park. And I think that is pretty close to due and owing with the notion for any number of residents it's a big issue. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would be very brief today. As Councilmember Art has said, I, I was sick last week. It's going around. Uh, Councilmember Brian is also sick this week. So wash your hands, drink your vitamin C, take your vitamins. <coughs> it's still kind of processing through me. Um, I'm still trying to work with the Union Pacific and the Trails Association on Moss Spray and trying to get a meeting set up with them. Um, they were very responsive for about a week and a half, and now they don't want to talk to us anymore. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So I've been still trying to work with them, uh, trying to get in contact with them on a weekly basis. Um, probably just going to have to show up in Sacramento. Let's go. We're going to ask one. <laughs> well, the hell out of can me. the sheriff arrest them on some? Yeah. 
We sent him a letter, and the uh, man here, excuse me for mentioning, mm -hmm. we sent him a letter for working with the Trail Association. They committed to be with us and that's what I thought. Yeah. They did, yeah, they did the same thing for us too, but we haven't been able to get a date. But now we've got crickets, you know. Yeah. All right, I'll make some calls and see. We appreciate that. It's a serious public safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah, I think anyone, I think at this point, the Trails Association and myself are also just trying to pester them as much as possible to get them up here. They said they were going to come up for a stakeholder meeting in January. It's now February. Um, so we're working on that. Um, I have been meeting with Ed Kavanaugh from JF Shames on the Governor's Task Force for Affordable Housing, um, discussing some of the issues that rural communities have with trying to reach their affordable housing numbers. Um, and that's going really well. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be having a couple other meetings with the task members um, to continue to talk about some of the things we deal with, which is trying to afford our infrastructure upgrades, in, trying to afford um, infrastructure to unincorporated areas, because that's really what they want to see. They said, well, why aren't you pushing water and sewer to all these unincorporated areas? And I said, we can't even afford the stuff that we have. Um, so we're, we're, we're continuing to work on that, and hopefully that will bring um, some kind of funding source to our area to help kind of stimulate the housing production. Um, talking with Rico, uh, SB2 funding should be approved here soon. It as has soon, been. It has been. Okay. It has been. Um, so the SB2 funding for housing planning um, is coming through, and so that's, that's really great. So we're going to be working on housing quite a bit. Um, we have completed the survey for the priorities and visioning for those here, so it will be going out, I believe, in the March bills. Okay. Um, so those will be available through your March utility bill. If you need any extras, we'll have some at City Hall in paper format, and I believe we're going to be putting them on the website as well. Okay. 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 Great. Yes, that's great. Um, so please take that for us. It's going to give, you, give us a lot of information on the priorities residents have uh, for spending. Um, so that's, please promote that and, and have people in your household take those. Um, eat, every person can take it, so you'll only get one in your bill, but if you have extra people, again, we will have extras for you to take um, and give input back to us on that. And that's going to be very important coming up here. Madam Mayor? Yes. I could also recommend that anybody that is hearing this let their neighbors and friends know so yeah. they're aware that it's going to be in the bill and look for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, thing that's all that I can remember right now, um, but we will move on. So thank you. We'll now move to item number six, which is committee reports. Council Member Arthur, do you have a finance committee meeting since the last city council meeting? Uh, we did, and I don't know if the report is better given by the city manager, the finance director, uh, whatever your pleasure. I'll just mention the auditor presented. The finance committee did accept the audit, and they were going to recommend the city council accept the audit. But I'll let you know, uh, chair of the committee, make a report. I'm, I'm think he has some other pieces that he wants to mention. But just FYI, the audit was accepted by the finance committee. And then, thank okay. you. And we'll spend the last. So we're great. Well, no, no. The the comment I will make is. I obviously urge every member of the city council to read the audit report because we're not going to be sure. Good. And so we'll have a future agenda item to discuss with the city council okay. as well. So, thank you. Uh, any other committee reports? The only other one I have is I will be going to McLeod tomorrow as a representative of the city for the Regional Water Action Group, there are two issues of import to the city. One I'll talk about later when we talk about the Wastewater 3 operator. The first issue, of course, is the status of our request to the state of California for grant funds to significantly upgrade the Mossbury intake works. And Hopefully that is in good shape, and the recommendation of the RWAG is that Dunsmuir be funded for this entire project. And the other item, of course, is there is a study done by Paul Rhodes out of the Truckee 
uh, public service district that proposes we share with Mount Shasta the cost of a wastewater three operator, but we can talk about that more when we get to that item. Thank you. Any other committee reports? Just uh, pointing out that the airport committee will be a meeting. We're lining up date. We'll be taking care of that. It'll be an evening meeting so that people, pilots, etc., can attend. Mm -hmm. Thank Wait, you. It just just on that point. We spent two hours last night in finance, and our independent auditor, Charlie, went through his findings and some minor problems in the city's finances, and then he said, would you like to talk about the elephant in the room? And the elephant in the room is the airport. So, in both the last auditor's report and this auditor's report, he has pointed out how large a liability our airport is to the general fund. We'll be discussing that in an open meeting at another date when it's on the schedule. All right, any other committee reports? Hearing none, we will move on to item number seven, which is approval of the minutes for January 30th, 2020. And I make a motion to approve the minutes for January 30th, 2020, and February 6th, 2020. We'll have to do them separately since I will have to abstain <coughs> from the February 6th. So we will move into there's a motion for approval for the January, January 2020. Is there a second? Second. All right. We'll give the second to Council Member Arth. Uh, any discussion on the motion at hand? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All those in favor of approving the January 30th, 2020 minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the minutes for the February 6th, 2020. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll take this one. All right. Second by Councilmember Deutsch. Is there any discussion on the motion at hand? Councilmember Art? Well, two things. One is to compliment. Julie on the excellent job she does taking the minutes for this meeting. Here, here. And in the minutes for the meeting before is future agenda items. A couple of them seem to have been recognized. I'm making a page nine of our agenda packet. But I specifically am concerned about the management of the historic district. I raised it. I received a second from mm -hmm. Council Member Keisler. And do I need to raise it again tonight? Is it going no. to be considered? Yeah, I'm looking at the so the, the historic district has a lot going on with it, digging through some of the historic records and then looking at the state registry records. And so it's, it's a lot more involved than just coming back with an easy report. So I want to get as much information on it as possible. It turns out that there was a lot of things that have not been upkept, and there's a lot of things that weren't done at the beginning of it that we'll have to rectify. So I'm, I'm working on it and, and getting some information from the state to make sure that we can qualify for funding as well as be properly registered. I mean, I thought I heard from the city manager based on his background we need to have some sort of an oversight group. That is part of the deal. You need to have a lot of As a legal district. And, and yeah. I don't know what that goes. Yeah. yeah, no, it's on the future agenda items. I've just been putting together the information of what needs to be done, what has been done, um, so that we have a full picture of what needs to happen with that. Thank you. Okay. It's I could be a witness to the conversation that went on with that regard. It's yeah. a lot deeper than just a quick solution. Yeah, there's a, there's, there is basically what happened when it got put together, a bunch of things were not considered. Um, so we're gonna have to do quite a bit of work to get that up and running and, and properly done. So it, it is still coming, working on that. So any other comments on the minutes? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second by Councilmember Kaiser and Councilmember Deutsch. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, I will abstain since I was absent. Motion carries. We'll now move into item number eight, which is our consent agenda. Uh, tonight we have item number 8A, which is SB1 funding resolution project list. 8B, local transportation fund claim form. Item C, checkered registrar for February 1st, 2020 through the 7th. And D, fire engine swap. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? No, I'll make a motion to adopt the consent agenda. All right, in full. Second full. And there's a second by Councilmember Deutsch. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Councilmember Arf? Well, I 
am looking at page 12 of the agenda packet, the second page of resolution 2020XX. And as you know, I'm sort of concerned with the state of sidewalks in Dunsmuir. Um, but what I see for project one, asphalt crack sealing, and project two, sidewalk repairs, schedule for completion, we're giving 2019 dates. Why are we doing that? So that, that that's um, prior projects that are already on the project list that we're just keeping on the project list in case council decides to allocate SB1 funds for those projects. So it was a project so, that didn't get done. I'm, well, or we, I mean, we did do, there were, some. there was allocations toward those sidewalks with SB1 funds. And we can continue to do that if council so desires. The main point of the resolution is the current project, or a, a new project. So we're now establishing three total projects. So, Do you have any other questions? Yeah, no, let me add something to that, too. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think for a, a, a number of years now, we haven't been submitting projects and advocating well enough for transportation projects. Uh, so, uh, I've met with um, local transportation fund folks. Uh, I have case working on a cost estimate for a um, two different packages of pro uh, projects that include sidewalks, ADA, etc., that are sprinkled around the community so it doesn't look like we're favoring one area over another. So then we can bring those cost estimates and, um, and lay it at the feet, uh, whether it be at the state level or at the county level, to say these are the things that we need to get funded and we have been skipped over for a number of years. So it's in the works. Thank you. So consent agenda items typically are not open for discussion. If you'd like to pull this as a new agenda item to amend it, you can. All right. Any other discussion on the motion at hand, which is to approve consent agenda items A, 8A through 8D? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving consent agenda items 8A, B, C, and D, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Moving on to item number 9, public hearings. We have none scheduled for today. So we'll move into item number 10, which is old business, which is the second reading of the abandoned and distressed building ordinance, ordinance number 565, City Manager Utah. So, uh, second reading of uh, the distressed building ordinance. Essentially, as you all know, we have a number of uh, long-term vacant commercial properties that um, are in disrepair, and we are not seeing any movement uh, in, seeing the, in terms of getting them up to code or getting uh, tenants into them. And so what we are doing is creating a registry for commercial and residential buildings uh, that have been vacant for six months or more. Um, and there are a lot of nuances to this, but essentially the point is to move folks with commercial and residential properties that are in disrepair and are underutilized to either uh, improve their properties and work towards getting uh, some lively economic development happening in the commercial district or to do something about distressed residential properties. And so over a period of time, if no work is done on these properties, then the, uh, um, the registration fees and fines uh, increase substantially. And were there any amendments from the first reading to the second reading? No. All right. Great. Any qu clarifying questions for city staff at this time? Seeing none, we'll move into public comment. Anyone who would like to give public comment on this item can please come up to the podium. Please state your name and you will have three minutes. Hello, my name is Tina Fava. I live in Dunsmuir. Um, I am for the new ordinance of the abandoned and distressed properties, especially in the downtown historic district. Um, I was sold a dream as many of us have been on these properties and since 2013 I have seen zero progress. In fact, 
I've seen them just become worse and worse and worse. And I've seen many rounds of it all. I'm sure all of us have. So I implore you to put this ordinance into effect as soon as possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who'd like to give public comment on this item? Um, I am Carol Cedar Street. Um, I am also um, just expressing my support for this ordinance as a business owner who would really like to see more um, other businesses being able to open up and economy here improving and uh, retaining more time. Like when people come to visit, they don't have much to keep them here for very long hours. And so all of the businesses are suffering because a few bad players don't want to open up their businesses. And also, I wanted to say, um, commend Julie on all the hard work you do, and we're going to miss you a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank sure. you. Are there any other members of the public who would like to comment? <clears throat> Paris Petrick, Shasta Avenue. Um, as a property owner here in Densmere, I find it to be incredibly important that our buildings downtown are thriving. Um, it's an embarrassment. And I fully, and my husband too, fully supports this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any Second of all, second. 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 See none. Oh, see none. We will close the public comment section for the second reading of the abandoned and distressed building ordinance, and we'll now move into discussion. Discussion. Um, you are sorry. I, I did forget to mention something more specific. Was um, also that um, you know I I just want to say something about the theater specifically, and that uh, that should. Um, you know, whatever that, that we're doing here is going to definitely maybe, you know, push some sort of action towards seeing that open again someday in the future. Um, but also feel like that should be the top priority because if that were open, it would be the gem of the city, mm -hmm. the center of the city economy and would raise everybody's votes. Um, so I just wanted to put in a special word for the California Theater. Thank you. All right, we'll now move into discussion on this item. Uh, is there any discussion from the council members? I'm not here at the last meeting, but I don't believe we need to talk about nothing. Cool. I, I have no verbiage, so I'm just going to try this. I'd like to make a motion uh, to pass ordinance 565 in its second reading, an ordinance of the city of Dunsmuir City Council, adding chapter 9.14. Abandoned and distressed real property to the Dunsmuir Municipal, Municipal Code by time only. Thank you. There's a motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, there's a second by Councilmember Deutsch. Any discussion at the motion at hand? Councilmember Arth? Well, a question to the staff. <clears throat> if the city says yes on second reading and adopts this ordinance, and we now have a code enforcement officer in place for the several witnesses that took the time to tell us how important this is what will be the implementation schedule for the enforcement of the new ordinance so uh, it's it's really clear well we have a code like this mentioned we have a code enforcement officer on who's here Yep. Oh, yep. And so he needs to pass a quasi-law enforcement uh, test that he's scheduled for. Uh, as soon as he passes that, then he can start writing citations. And the first thing uh, we do is we start looking at distressed properties. And for code violations, we um, vigorously write citations. And we ensure that people with distressed properties that are clearly uh, in disrepair are getting into register uh, with our register. And it takes 30 days for the ordinance to ratify, so in that 30 days that it takes for us to wait for this to go to the paper and, and become a ratified ordinance, hopefully that will all take effect at the same time. 
Madam Mayor, when does, when does uh, our code enforcement take this quasi test and when does he become official? His name is Mark Allen and he is here. Yeah, Mark. When does Mark take this test? It's March 9th. March 9th. March 9th through the 18th. March 9th through the 18th? Mm -hmm. Damn! Really? That's a lot of tests. Yeah. yeah okay. Class. In, in my comments in your absence on the first reading, I thanked the city of Weed. I thanked the city manager and the support team. And my concern for our city is we have not conducted an enforcement hearing since I was mayor 10 or 12 years ago. So our city needs to anticipate when the citations go out, there will be appeals and there will be challenges. Are they going to go to the planning commission? Are they going to go to the city council? Who is going to oversee the hearings? They need to be impartial and fair and effective. So this is all new territory. Good point. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of that at a later date. We've been discussing the enforcement right. chapters. That okay. Will be to uh, well, good job, everybody. All right. Any other discussion on the motion at hand? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All those in favor of approving Ordinance 565 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Dunsmere City Council, adding Chapter 9.14, Abandon and Distress re Real Property to the Dunsmere Municipal Code. Please qualify by saying aye. Aye. Do you want to do a roll call just because this is this? No. no. Okay. Right. Aye. 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 Uh, I did. I already. Did not Nays, abstention. Thank you. 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 Thank um, because our chair of the finance committee is not here, um, and Councilmember Brian had a special interest in the uh, item number 11C, which is discussion and possible action of the Dunsmuir Chamber of Commerce, um, and also item 11F, which is revisiting the 2019-2020 budget goals and objectives. I'd like to add one more to that, item B. The review of committee appointments. Because he's not here, much of like wait until he's here. Okay. Um, would the council members be amicable to moving items B, C, and F to our next meeting so that Council Member Brian is available to discuss those items? I would concur with that assessment. So I'll move in one second. Well, wait, Council Member Art, do you have well, any issues with that? Ironically, three of the council members in your absence thought it was a very high priority including Councilmember Tyson, we're not getting the job done. So, particularly because Ed Valenzuela has sat through this meeting, I would like to have an ad hoc committee on regional greenway solutions. So we're not discussing greenway stuff this time. The items that we're discussing, well, tabling to another meeting, is review of committee appointments, discussion of possible action of the Dunsmere Chamber of Commerce, so, and the revisit of the 1920 budget goals and objectives. I'm not in favor of table 11B. 11B, the review of committee appointments? Okay. But you are amicable to items C and F going to the next meeting? Yes, because I okay. thank the Vice Mayor legitimately, and I will simply note, we don't even have the budget goals and objectives in our agenda packet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I know he wanted to discuss that as a last minute in addition, um, so it was a little bit tight for that. How so are we going to review? I, I, I disagree with you, Pete, but we're going to talk about the committee appointments, but he's not here. Well, we can discuss them. Uh, well, this isn't going to be a one meeting discussion. Okay. Um, but we are all amicable to moving items 11C and 11F to the next meeting, so I will go ahead and table those to the next meeting. And uh, Julie, can you please make a note for that? Thank you. So we will keep items A, B, and E um, since we are not unanimous in tabling those. So we'll move on to item number 11A, which is our part time wastewater treatment plant grade three. So I will hand this over to City Manager Great. So um, we have had a posting for a wastewater three now for a couple of months. 
and have uh, seen absolutely no replies. In fact, I uh, um, got permission from the state to get every wastewater three uh, email in the state and email the, the posting to everybody. Today, uh, and I got a response and said, "I love that here." And that's it. That's all he said. That's all he said. Uh, and then eventually, uh, we got a gentleman who is retired as a wastewater, uh, you know, chief plant operator from uh, Chico, and um, he is working half time as a, uh, you know, this is a technical term, uh, package plant operator in Butte County, for Butte Community College. And uh, he's offered to come up here and work uh, twice a week uh, and act in the stead of Pace. Uh, and if for the total cost, uh, and he's monitored remotely, for total cost for the year of uh, $44,000. And if you compare that to PACE, which is doing the same thing, the bill for PACE uh, for the same period this last year was $127,000. Um, so, so that's, that's more than $44,000, right? It's a little bit more. Um, yeah, but um, so the guy has got his wastewater free certificate. I've got all his information. It all checks out. He's been up here, he's met with plant operators, he's very familiar with our equipment, he's willing to take on that role. Um, I don't think that, well, first of all, the state, and, and um, I've got in writing from Pace that this is, satisfies uh, requirements. I would prefer to have a full-time wastewater three on board, but until we have enough money to attract somebody, I, I think this is a good stopgap measure. Thank you. Council Member has a question. Are our, our staff likes to die? Um, so let me put it this way. They, they think that he's competent. I think that we're walking into, you know, a strange current relationship um, in the wastewater department. And I think the idea of having somebody walk in and instantly become the person in charge I think I, I can sense a little discomfort about them, but they all, but they agree that he's uh, completely confident, and this gentleman has agreed to mentor one of our folks uh, towards passing the wastewater three. That's great. I've heard that rumor somewhere. That's great. Are there any other questions for right now before I move into public comment? Seeing none, we'll open this up for public comment. Anyone who would like to come and speak on this item has three minutes. Hi, Paris Patrick again. And um, so, a question if there is somebody who is interested in that position, um, can they still come and apply? Uh, the, the requirement to apply for the position is having the wastewater three certificate in hand. Correct. In terms of coming in, like we spoke about before the meeting, uh, come on in and let's have a discussion and uh, we can get on the right track and whoever gets to the wastewater three certificate first and wants to work in this city uh, for the you know, the pay that we've advertised, that's that's great. Oh, I guess what I was specifically saying is if you are hiring for this year, for the 44000 does that mean that this is closed for the year? I guess that's what I was trying no, to say. It, 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 is, it is a purely stopgap measure gotcha. and it is at will employee. Um, no benefits. It is purely a contract relationship. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item for tonight? Seeing no, we'll close public comment and move into discussion. Is there any discussion on the item or any motions? I, I would like to thank you guys for putting the effort out to email every one of them in the state of Cal. That's for, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Any more discussion? I'm ready to make a motion. Well, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The motion. The recommendation posits an either or approve the hiring of a part-time wastewater three operator or continue utilizing PACE's services. 
basin services are extraordinarily expensive. And they don't want to do it. And they don't want to do it, and the state doesn't want them to do it. Okay. On the other hand, I've enjoyed being part of the Regional Water Action Group, and it was one of the consultants to that group when I asked, the city of Dunsmere has this intractable problem. And they said, well, here is the report from Paul Rose that suggests that the city of Dunsmere and the city of Mount Shasta, both of who discharge their sewage into the upper sack, that in his professional experience as a grade five operator, it makes a huge amount of sense for the two cities to work together to co-fund the position and moreover he would help us find the funds to pay for the position because there's any number of sources of funds available. <coughs> so I'm happy to go with what is purely stopgap and not the most ideal resolution but I'd like the city to direct the city manager to work with his counterparts in the city of Mount Shasta to see if there is a better solution based on the Rose report that I forwarded to the mayor and the city manager. Is that a motion? Yes. Well, I, I, you know, I don't want to take away from someone else's motion, but if, if, if this is our incremental progress, I think the better path is to joint venture with the city of Mount Shasta and have a consultant looking for funds to relieve both communities. Okay. Yeah, I would say that uh, something the way that both the finance director and the city manager approached this, that this is simply just a stopgap and that all kinds of other options will be explored going forward. So with that in mind, I move that we uh, uh, adopt. How do we want to put this? <coughs> Can I? Do you want to go for it? Yeah. Let me try to make everybody happy. I want to make a motion, Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. to hire the part-time wastewater pre-operator to replace plate pace until a permanent fix can be found. With the modification to this paper here to instruct city manager or staff to research the possibility of co-mingling, whatever, with Mount Shasta to share a wastewater tree. On the recommendation of Paul Rose's report that Mr. Arth has submitted to both the mayor and the city manager. Okay. How did that sound to you, sir? Excellent. How did that sound to you, sir? Good. Why don't you go ahead and second that? Second. All right. There's a motion and a second. Julie, I hope you got all that. <laughs> Is there any other discussion on the motion at hand that has not been said yet? Seeing none, we will move into a roll call vote. Uh, Councilmember Deutsch, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Keisler? Aye. Councilmember Art? Aye. And myself is an aye. Motion carries. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to staff for at least finding a $84-ish thousand dollar solution. Really? What money did they just wrote back? We left it up there and that's it? That's it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, we will now move on to item 11B, which is review of committee appointments. Uh, knowing that Councilmember Brian is not here, I would not, I would advise against making any formal motions tonight um, until we get him here, but we can have the discussion. Um, right now, we just have questions, and then we'll move into public comment. Any questions on the appointments? Well, I guess. If you can leave with what is the process, we have handed out our list of committees. As far as I know, the only commission function, excuse me, the only committee functioning is finance. Mm -hmm. The airport occasionally, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, we're looking at the airport being at hot because and there is a need for a monthly meeting for that. So we're looking at a number of ad hoc, get the job done, standing committees. I do think if we're still talking about this in May or June, 
we're not doing a very good job. So the other thing is, is we do have other outside agency assignments if anyone would like to switch so we can have that discussion. Um, and I'll just review these for the members of the public who are here. So uh, city council members sit on a number of different committees, which include Brown Act committees, which are formal um, with resolution. There's a couple of these that have not been formalized. So economic development and tourism, which is Councilmember Brian and George. I don't believe that committee is meeting and has not formalized a resolution. We have not yet. Uh, public facilities and services was advertised, and I know we discussed due to the lack of individuals wishing to serve on that committee, it may be disbanded and become a special project as hoc when needed. Um, airport, we are discussing a resolution to create an ad hoc to assist the city manager with functions of the airport. Trails and recreation, we've kind of just been working on that on the side. So yeah, but they don't call us back. I know. So again, that committee has not been formalized. Um, just if I could on that, I want to reiterate that uh, former Mayor Kathy Border from Dun from Mount Shasta had said that she wants to connect up with Dun's Mayor and work on trails together. So yeah, she is stepping out of the trail partners now. She is? Yes. So that's another thing. Um, and and Councilmember Tyson and I did go to one of the meetings that they had, and it seemed much more Mount Chasta focused, and that's why we kind of stopped going because they weren't interested in us as much. Um, and so for ad hoc committees, we have protocols and solid waste sewer rate study committee. Those both probably should be disbanded at this point since they completed their documents. Um, so we will take those off. So the only question on that though is whether or not you want to take that solid waste and turn it into a committee, an ad hoc committee that would work on the, uh, the uh, It could. So what we're working on was solid waste and green waste, just to cover that really quick, and I apologize for, for cutting you off, but we just got emails today. Um, so Mount Chaston just finished their franchise agreement and a 218 study for their solid waste to meet the new state mandates, and so um, Muriel Terrell, thankfully, um, the finance director up there gave the contact information for the consultant who did that. And so, uh, city manager, he passes in, in consultation with that individual because their 218 and solid waste took into account all of the new changes for the state, and that's something we probably should look at. So, maybe there will be a recommendation for an ad hoc, but I don't think that there's an ability well, to make a recommendation yet. Well, I was referring to as Clemens, the contract Clemens. Is that something that would fall into an ad hoc, or do you want to do it on your own? How does that work? So it's in process. Uh, Clemens has been contacted, and the gentleman that I contacted with this firm usually represents solid waste haulers. Uh, and in this case, they are going to work with the solid waste hauler. They know what we need to accomplish, and they know what our goals are, and um, they're going to have some discussions. And then we're going to get together and, and try to figure out what costs are. There's going to be a lot of negotiations in between. But this person is acting as a go-between on these, um, these discussions. Now, with the new rules in place, because of the size of our community, um, I think it would be prudent to move right now towards meeting those goals. But given the size of the community, we don't need to meet that standard until 2026. Mm -hmm. um, but, and this is nothing to count on yet, but we have a concern in town uh, that uh, has tied up a number of properties and uh, for uh, cannabis related businesses, including some work up at the airport, and um, they have proposed to uh, build and manage a green waste facility as part of um, a goodwill gesture to the community. And um, they've lived up to all their promises up to this point, but it's nothing to count on, but something to keep in the back of our minds. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I think once we get more and more information, we might come back with an ad hoc, or we might stay with, an, with just the city manager, with the consultant. Um, so I think it's a little You're going to want to add on that. Probably. But, yeah, no, you're good. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably come back with that at a later date. I don't think we can draft up a resolution tonight for consideration. Outside agency assignments, the CDBG Loan Committee is Councilmember Brian. Uh, Lola is typically the mayor and mayor pro tem who sits on the mayor selection committee. Um, that's pretty straightforward. 
Um, Irwin is council member Arth, so unless he wants to switch out or give that one up, um, that's up there. Score is the city manager and our CFO Blake. Neighborhood Watch, I know, has kind of stagnated. I think we'll keep this on there. Yeah, that's the game plan. Let's keep it there. Okay. Hopefully, after the April 18th of the event, we can get some more. That's right. Okay. But it's not me. Let's switch that out to you. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. You ran it. Did a really good job. So once we get through public comment, we can go through and make changes. I'm just reviewing these for the general public. Uh, we do not have a LAFCO member, which is the Local Agency Formation Commission, as the people who are involved in annexations. We do not have a member on that. Those have to be appointed um, by the Mayor's Selection Group at the uh, Lola Dinners. Thank you. Siskiyou County Local Transportation Committee. Uh, again, uh, appointments are made by Lola for that. I believe Councilmember Deutsch, are you on there? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. So Regional Integrated Waste Management Council, I go to those. Um, I know Councilmember Arth is on there as well. They only meet twice a year, so it's not like they get to meet very often, and it's usually kind of depressing to me. Um, <laughs> I'll make sure I don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it basically it, it, it's basically a meeting of all the solid waste haulers and solid waste people and all of us talking about how we can't meet our state mandates. Yup, that's basically what we do. Mm. Um, I mean, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. I just noticed that we have two folks that are sitting here that may want to leave. Is that something we may want to consider if they want to? If, you, if you'd like. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll stick around. Okay. okay. It's, it's interesting some of these issues do. Okay. Thanks for the We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so Dunsmere, uh, just to finish up, the other outside agencies, the Dunsmere Park, Parks and Recreation Board, which we appoint individuals Chris to. Chris Langston moved. Okay, so it's just a correction on that. Yeah, no okay. longer. Uh, and then we have a Chamber of Commerce liaison, with, which is Council Member Deutsch, and then the Collier Interpretive and Information Center, the CIIC, is also Council Member Deutsch. Yeah. So just for the information, um, before we move into public comment and discussion, those are the things that are here. Um, any other clarifying questions? The only other, I think the only thing we've decided is we will probably have a solid waste Ad hoc yeah. coming up, but that's not really up for discussion tonight. Right. Um, Council member, our questions so, before I move into public comment. I'm making I'm making one offer. Okay. I'm I'm willing to put this whole matter over till the meeting of the vice mayor is well and present. If we could give Supervisor Valenzuela five minutes to talk about his notion of regional greenway solutions because that will inform my decision on what I want to do this year and next year. Well, unfortunately, green waste and regional green waste is not on the agenda. If we're talking about committee appointments and we have talked about solid waste becoming ad hoc at maybe a next agenda. Um, I apologize to our, our board of supervisors that it's not on the agenda and I don't want us to get off topic and on an action item that's not actionable. But if um, you just chose to go, get up as a member of the public and talk about green waste, if he wants to get up and talk about a committee. Could I just, could I just quickly uh, state that I am working on a green waste program. I think we will be trialing again this year, Earth Day week, okay. a low cost green waste program. The goal is to build on that for a thing, uh, spring, fall, and then ongoing continue. But you know, it's a small step as we are doing, but I'm very confident we will have a green waste program trialing again this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. I'm going to go to public comment. Would anyone like to publicly comment on committee appointments? Staying on track. Seeing that we'll move into discussion, it sounds as though Councilmember Arth would like to now table this to the next meeting. Um, this gives That's us something right. to talk about, and there's a second there. Um, so I would I would strongly urge the council members to review what's currently on here. I will say I think at least action that we can take tonight is to remove the committees that have finished, which is our protocols ad hoc, our solid waste study committee, and then to correct the neighborhood watch council member assignment to from Keisler to Deutsch, and then to remove Chris Langston from the Dunsmuir Park and Rec board just due to some clerical stuff. Um, Do you have a new person on there for that? Uh, we appointed... Ellen McCarran. Ellen McCarran. 
Is she on there? Yep. Or is she not on that? She's not on this. She should be updated. Yeah. All right. So seeing no other discussion, there, there's a motion to table to the next meeting in a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. We'll now move on to item 11E, which is Senate Bill 998, discontinuation of water service. Boy, <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, as I was sitting here thinking about bringing this subject up, I am glad that uh, Chair, Captain, Sergeant Westman are here. Uh, I just do want to point out that if citizens come in and inhibit the operations of city uh, business or are disruptive or being uh, unfair to our staff, sheriffs will be called and that individual will be dealt with. So I just want to mention that as a discontinuation of service policy. Sometimes there are some folk that uh, do not appreciate it and want to make it voice to city staff. So I just want to make sure that our city staff feel comfortable, confident, and I want the public to be very aware that sheriffs will be called. Thank you. All right, Senate Bill 998 is a Senate bill from the state of California that uh, wants to uh, adhere to certain guidelines and wants to establish a policy. So this Senate bill is just to establish a policy of discontinuation of residential water service. Okay, so um, a few, there's a, it's a whole big policy, it's in the packet, um, the, or the Senate bill is in the packet. I also have the policy that I have created back here as well. So, a few key points that I wanted to show. Water system cannot discontinue residential water service until the customer is delinquent for at least 60 days. Okay, but in this policy, we get to determine when the delinquency period starts. Okay, so we can get into all this and more probably have questions. But, all right, then next, a water system must notice the customer seven days prior to the discontinuation. Again, there's multiple facets with that notice we can all get into. Uh, the last thing I just bullet point I wanted to point out was that the reconnection fee, no matter if the water is turned off or not, the reconnection fee is $50 for normal operating hours and $150 for after hours. So if somebody gets turned off and they call on a Saturday, they need to realize that if they want the water turned on back, you don't want it turned on then, $150. Is that our policy or is that state mandated? So this, the, the $50 and the $150 is now instituted in Senate Bill 998. Question? Yep. Yep. You said, regardless if my water's on, but you're saying it's disconnected. But it really isn't disconnected. But now you're going to charge me 150 on a Saturday to turn it back on, but it is on. That's what you said, regardless if it's on or not. Regardless if, if the crew goes out to physically discontinue okay, the so actual water flow. So they ain't been there feet. yet. Your crew ain't been to turn me off yet. I'm still on, but you're charging me, and Saturday. No, okay, let's just say it's Friday. It's Wednesday afternoon. It's still 50 bucks. Even though it's not off, it's still a $50 turn on fee because I didn't pay my bill. Plus whatever you owe on the bill for this experience. Correct. Okay, so if I don't pay my bill for two months, seven days before the two months is up, you'll give a notice to the people <coughs> that we're turning you off. We may call, we may but call. there will be a notice. So the notice can be a phone call or a mailed letter or a placement at the residence. I just want to be perfectly clear how it's going to go down. So I'm going to reiterate for both of us. Perfect. If you don't pay a water bill for two months, then they're going to charge you a $50 reconnect fee plus what you owe. If you get turned off and you come into City Hall yelling, at staff, you're going to get the cops called on you. So be nice to city staff. Read your bill. 
Senate bill does not refer to the sheriff's call, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. And okay. Just, just to clarify, so the 60 day is actually a 30 day extension from what we normally do right now. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, not quite. It's about 15 day extension. Currently, right now, we we discontinue at about 45 days, so that extends it from 45 to 60 days. So, to be a little more specific, too, I mentioned delinquency period. The delinquency period is established on the first of the month. So, while people may think that they are delinquent right when they get their bill, the terminology doesn't matter if you want to be called that you are delinquent or not. The delinquency period starts on the first of the month. So, even if you don't receive a bill on the first, if it comes on the second or the third or the thirty-first or whenever the bill physically gets to the customer, it's the, the last first. The delinquency period will start on the first of the month. But you'll notice that that they're in the delinquency period. No. Oh, okay. Delinquency period is established the first of the month. Of oh, the month you're in, not next month. Delinquency period begins on the first. Of a month. Okay. Nope. No. No. Delinquency period starts on the first of a month. Okay. Then, 60 days later, if that amount is not paid, then water can be discontinued. One thing that might make this a little straighter is what does the bill say that do the bill is due? Okay. So a bill is generated <clears throat> around the first of a month. 9963 is a typical bill. But I mean, what does the date say? What does the date say? What is due? It is. It is. There is a late payment penalty of 10 percent that is established on the 26th of the month. So you have to pay. Um, so you, if you don't want to pay a penalty, you are required to pay between the first and the 25th. Okay. So around the receipt of the bill, you've got about three weeks to pay. Correct. Without receiving a penalty. And that's currently how we do it. That is current how we do it, and so that is still so, established. So just to clarify, so if I don't pay on the 25th, then I'll be charged that 10%. Yep. And then if the next first comes around and I get the next bill, how long do I have until I get my water shut off? You have 60 days until shot until water shut off. From, from that the 25th. From, from the first. first. From, from the first. first. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be very confusing for people. It's, it's a confusing policy. I mean, yes, pay the bill, but some of us have irresponsible spouses who don't pay their bill, um, which has happened. But uh, I, I think it's important for people, especially in actual series now. Um, yeah, he doesn't read things. But it's really important to be very clear on that because especially as someone has moved a lot, it, it gets very confusing if you're moving from one place to another and what bill is still due and what when can I start my service. I think that's going to be very critical that we're very clear with people and at least patient with people that you know those things are going to happen and especially if we have a higher amount of low income individuals who are possibly working multiple jobs moving more often than typical other moderate to higher income individuals, we need to definitely be very clear um, about that. Because obviously, we're not understanding very clearly what's going on. Yep. And we're a nice cross-section of the different types of individuals who live here. Yeah, this is perfect, this is great. So you shouldn't need a master's degree to figure out what the hell's going on with your bill. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, I digress. Are there any questions before I go into public comment? I believe this is an information only item, so you're not looking for any direction at this point. I am not. I will most likely give one after public comment, but do you have any questions before I go? I have a comment to the well, based on what I've heard so far, is it correct to say that the current policies and tariffs or contractual relationships between our customers and our water operation, are they in compliance with this legislation or are they not in compliance with this legislation? With the notion it has notice requirements, it has a special provision for low-income customers, it has a 60-day guarantee, um, are we in compliance or not? I, I, what, what's the question? I mean, the this, question is, if 
I go to the website of the city of Dunsmuir, will I see a termination policy for residential water service that satisfies all the provisions of this law or not? Yes. Yes, right. yes. Uh, yes you will. Um, and we're bringing this up early so we have the opportunity to notice the public on it. And uh, the due date on this going into effect was supposed to be February 2nd. But given the size of our community and who we report to, we're given mm -hmm. until April 1st or 2nd. But we're putting in it into place sooner, but we wanted to give uh, enough time to notice the community and then get it up on our website. But are you noticing changes or no changes? This will definitely change. Well, so, so our current policy, well, prior to February 1st, the policy was we shut off at 45 days, which would not adhere to Senate Bill 998. And if you're a question of if you're a person of lower income, do you get a break? No, there's no breaks because then it's a user. But the difference there is there is but there is in the law. Well, there, so I think what you're referring to is deferred or reduced payments. Yes. We can't offer that. There's no factor in which we can offer a reduced payment for this customer that doesn't affect this customer. Be fair to all. And that's what I was going to bring up in my comments. So while we're on it, what I was going to say was that uh, from the standpoint of uh, everyone wishing to be able to address the needs of people who are on limited uh, income, the uh, Prop 218 process says that we cannot do that as a city. The only way that it would be possible for there to be some sort of program in the city to help those people would be if it came from an outside agency or an outside group that raised funds to be able to support that. That's what Prop 218 says. You cannot, as uh, Mr. Kaiser said, charge one person less for the same service than the other. And this is where you and I disagree as the author of Lifeline legislation that helps poor people afford these essential services. If the California legislature and the governor say you give a break to poor residential utility customers, we know it as a city say no thank you. So before we go back into discussion, I'm going to open up public comment. Is there any public comment on the discussion on Senate Bill 998, knowing that this is an information only item for council? Seeing none, we'll now move into discussion. Please continue. Well, I, I would, you know, the staff sort of says here's the bill, which is now a law. It was enacted in 2018. And I would expect to see a new city of Dunsmuir policy that assures everybody we are following this law and that it is posted on our website and that maybe if we did a mailing with the utility bill to let customers know their new set of rights, that would be a good thing. Fantastic. So the policy that I did write is on our website currently right now. It does have to be required in five other languages. Uh, uh, so this policy is currently on our website as of February 1st. It was on there. Um, in trying to adhere to the February 1st deadline, which you know, may or may not be, uh, or which is not the case for us, but we're doing that. Uh, so that is in fact uh, established. Um, but as Councilman Arif has pointed out, there are many other aspects, facets to this bill. It's a law. Deferred, it's not a bill. Or in this law. Deferred and reduced payments, uh, payment schedules, um, even the inability to shut off for, you have to meet three requirements. All three of them have to be met. So again, there's, there's many facets and intricacies to the Law. Are we in compliance with it? No. So, as of right now, the policy is on the website. Which does make us. didn't answer the question. Which makes us in compliance. Okay. With the established policy. But what he's saying is we don't offer a lifeline. We don't offer a disadvantage. If you're. If we you're do not low, offer reduced payments. Re there's, no, there's no mechanism for that currently. There's no mechanism for that for the city. For any city. For any city. 
Well, right? I, I think other cities have nonprofits established yeah, sure. or some other type of way in which there the are individual a user, each individual user is still charged the same amount, but there's some outside non-enterprise entity that, that is that able to offer a reduced for such and such cases. That's, that's what I've been saying. Are, that, that, that is not what the law says. The law talks about us as a municipal provider. It doesn't talk about nonprofit groups. Yeah, but we can't give something. We can't give this, this is a fiction like we can't inspect buildings. So if the city attorney agrees with whatever this view is, I'd like to see it. They're, they're, I want us to be in compliance with state law and help the poor parts of our community. I want to help them so, too, but I don't want to get sued by Ms. Smith because it wasn't fair. So going let's back, to, so there is there is a plan for deferred or reduced payments. So even there, we can choose deferred or reduced. So we have a plan for this. The plan for deferred is that you can defer your payment up until seven days prior to the 60th day. So at 53 days, you can we and the city already is in compliance with this. We've been doing this in the past, where somebody can say, "I can't pay my 963 right now." We say, when can you pay it? They say, tomorrow, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Thank you for your call. Thank you for working with us. We appreciate it. We will see you on that date. If we do not see you on that date, we need to adhere to the current policy, which is a discontinuation. So we already offered deferred payments, so we're in compliance with that currently right now. I think it just comes from your interpretation of the law is not the same as the interpretation of cities. He's saying deferred, you're saying reduced. There's a huge gap between the guarantees given by state law and what our city is going to offer. And gee, it's no wonder people come into the office being very upset at their utility services being terminated for non-payment. The point of this bill is to help them maintain their water service, an essential part of life. You've got one little box, I'm looking at your little box on page 29 of the agenda packet, and it leaves out big chunks of the bill, or law, as we prefer. So since this is information only, there's no action requested, I would suggest... You were going to make some comments. Uh, I was just going to say, if we're going to notice them that they're going to get shut off to do more than one of the three options. But that's up to you. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, would like to, I would like to see a mock-up of what the city of Dunsphere's policy is that comports with the provisions of this law reviewed by the city attorney. I'm not for taking away poor people's rights. So, again, this is an information only to I start that conversation. I would suggest that you put together your points and send them to city staff for the city attorney to review, because obviously there's a difference in interpretation. Um, and so I would, I would strongly suggest that you do that. Um, Council did you have any questions? Madam Mayor, I, I kind of have to, I kind of have to concur with with Peter Hart's request to have the city attorney look at it. Because if there is a way, we could. There is a way. So there are a number of ways it's that a way, The way is to get somebody else to do it besides the city. That's not what the law says, sir. Mm -hmm. That's what so, I was told. Oh, well. Again, this is an information item only. You are not state senators or assembly members. So if you want to argue the language of the bill, I urge you to run for one of those two offices. Law. So, but we are a city council member, and we, we do have to abide by the law. Mm -hmm. and, so, again, we're And if there's a new bill. Council member Deutsch can take over for you. My first experience with the city was five years ago when I was one of the members of the team that went through and did the water rate study. We spent over a year doing that. We had Pace Engineering leading it. We had our city attorney involved in every step. We were told at every step of the way that you cannot give reduced rates to somebody based on anything. Everybody has to be treated the same. And what that means is that anybody that wants to come up and put together a nonprofit that raises money for those people, that is legal. The city itself, by Prop 218, cannot discriminate and give one person less 
than another. That's the way the law is. That's right. Thank you for your legal advice, sir. Well, it's so, advice that I've heard over a year's worth of time from all the people that knew what they were talking about. Going back to the items, can I just add something to this? Um, I will get my nose into this a little bit deeper, and I will get a reading from John Kenny. I think that is completely fair. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Seeing no other action needed on this item, we're going to move from item 11E to item number 12, which is future agenda items. A couple of things that have been mentioned tonight already is, is the historic district uh, solid waste out box specifically to talk about the Clemens contract and green waste and then bringing back that airport ad hoc resolution. Um, did I miss anything, gentlemen? No. No, only to stay if the chair of finance was here. Mm -hmm. The finance committee has set a very aggressive schedule for a two-year budget effort that will require this council to make a number of decisions in the next 60 days if we are going to adopt a budget by July 1, 2020. Mm -hmm. So the more we temporize on elephants in the room and a funds contract and so on, it makes the budget process that much less good. Okay. Any other items for future agenda that I missed, gentlemen? Well, I do want to bring up, it, it kind of struck me as I was talking before about five years ago, and that is five years ago we started the process for a five-year plan for the water rate study, and that plan was an op enacted in 2016. So we're on the calendar now to start the process over again for the next five years. I don't know when we want to start that off, but I, we're in that realm now where we want to take a look at what we're going to do for the next five years with the water rates. Okay, I will leave that to the city manager yeah. and our city engineer to sure. to just want to throw that out there. Thank you for yeah. bringing that to attention. All right. Seeing no other items, we'll move ourselves from item number 12 to item number 13, which is adjournment. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Before I say aye, I, I would like again. Thank Ed Don Smith for coming. I'd like to thank the service. John Lumpy, thank you for coming. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Hi. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. We're adjourned.